Welcome to part two of Business Concepts for Life Scientists uh, Strategy Lecture. My name is Sandy Ruggles, and I'm going to take you through the second half of the presentation that we've put together. Uh, I am a former UCSF graduate student. I have a PhD in biophysics, and more recently am a strategic marketer in medical device and technology companies. So in the first half of the presentation, Deb Dauber took you through value proposition and how value proposition can define the strategy for an enterprise. What I'm going to do now is take you through the other element that defines a strategy, and that's the organizational context. And then from there, how both value proposition and organizational context feed into an enterprise's strategy. So what is the organizational context? Organizational context defines essentially the situation that an enterprise finds itself in. So there's three main questions that I would address here. Where in the development cycle is the enterprise? What is the structure of the enterprise? And what resources are available to achieve the enterprise's objectives? So let's start with developmental stage. The developmental stage of the enterprise is really going to shape the strategy. In biotech and pharma, there's a very specific cycle that products follow from concept to clinic to market. And that cycle is one that is, has very clear milestones and progressions amongst it. So an organization or an enterprise may start one product, but they'll also have a second product and a third product that are in their portfolio that they used to progress their objectives forward. Uh, so the developmental stage of the enterprise is going to really define the strategy. When a an enterprise is really early in the pre-commercial life cycle, say in the basic research section, their focus is really going to be on validating that, that, en that entity for clinical development. A clinical stage organization is focused on their clinical studies and a commercial stage organization is focused on uh, generating as much revenue as possible off of that entity that they took through the product development cycle. Second, let's talk about organizational structure. So an enterprise can structure themselves in a many, many different ways. We're going to talk about four common ways an enterprise is structured. And this is from a very high level. So, uh, in the Bay Area, you can find organizations that are, that are in any of these four buckets. A fully integrated therapeutics company, so one that starts with basic research and has manufacturing, clinical, and sales capabilities. Good uh, examples of these are Genentech, Gilead. Uh, contract research organizations are, are enterprises that are focused on a specific part of the development cycle, an expertise in assays or animal studies or clinical studies. A virtual drug development structure is one that is very lean on full-time employees and instead progresses through the development cycle by hiring contractors or other outside entities to perform the development work. And the last might be an organization that's focused solely on clinical or preclinical validation. So they partner all of their clinical development and downstream uh, sales with a larger either pharmaceutical or biotech company. Third, we're going to talk about the resources available to the enterprise and how that affects the strategy that an, an enterprise can pursue. And I've broken this up into two different areas, funding and organizational capabilities. Both of these act as constraints on the type of strategies that can be pursued. So when we talk about funding, we're talking about the budget available to, uh, to, to fund near-term actions and any investment for growth. So funding breaks up into three different areas. The source of the funding, public or private, uh, the amount of the funding, whether that's a small amount of money or many hundreds of millions of dollars, and the timing of that, of, of that money. So whether that's money that is coming in six months or is money and funding that can guarantee 
three to five years worth of work. Second, we're going to talk about organizational capability. So this is the capacity of the enterprise to actually reach their goals given the resources that they've built. So this affects the speed and the type of work that can be accomplished by the enterprise. So I've broken this into three parts as well. We're talking about the people and their expertise, their ability and capacity to meet certain goals and objectives. We're ta we talk here about equipment and infrastructure. So what does the enterprise have in order to, uh, uh, to leverage to meet uh, goals and objectives? And the last is organizational structure. So how many senior leaders versus technicians does an organization have in, 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 and how have they been structured in order to meet the goals? So think of this as the framework within which an organization is able to accomplish strategies. So to recap, organizational context uh, is the situational confines for the enterprise. And we've talked about three different topic areas, development cycle, uh, enterprise structure, and the resources available to the enterprise to meet their objectives. So both of these, uh, the value proposition, the value that that enterprise is bringing to the market, the unmet need that they are pursuing, and the organizational context, so the restrictions and the box within which an organization can work within, are feeding into the strategy. So the strategy is really the milestones and the map of how an, uh, an enterprise is going to uh, reach its long-term goals. So we can break up the strategy into three different sections. Long-term strategy, so strategy that's out further than five years, is very aspirational. This is where the enterprise wants to go and what they want to be. The midterm strategy is focused on three to five years, and it's very preparational and directional. So an example of this might be the expectation to add, uh, add an entire manufacturing group or to add an entire capability to the organization and grow that over time. The last is the short-term strategy, and the short-term strategy is really focused around the next one to two years. It's extremely tactical, focused, and incremental. So it really, it feeds into the goals and objectives that every uh, person, a stakeholder has with regards to the enterprise over the coming year. So if the short-term strategy is where the enterprise is going, the goals and objectives would be where every individual within the organization is headed personally over the next one to two years. Let's talk about Catalyst Biosciences in year one as an example. So Catalyst was really founded on the idea of taking proteases, redesigning them so that they would target novel uh, proteins involved in disease. And in particular, so that these uh, proteases could be used to go after targets that were not amenable to antibody therapeutics. And so the organization was, uh, in year one, uh, was nascent, was really early. Uh, so let's talk about the development cycle. So Catalyst was in preclinical discovery basic research in that, in that year one, um, with the goal, though, of becoming a fully integrated biotherapeutics company. Uh, the funding was $10.2 million in Series A, and the capability was small. 10 people, uh, mostly focused on uh, proteolytic assay development, uh, automation, cell-based assays, and animal studies. So what does that turn into from a strategy? Well, we talked about long-term. Long-term Catalyst was focused on uh, becoming a publicly traded, fully integrated biotherapeutics company of both getting into the clinic and through the clinic to commercial uh, proteolytic therapeutics. Midterm. Well, how do you reach that long-term strategy? You have to get into the clinic. So the midterm strategy was to advance uh, proteolytic therapeutic candidates forward enough that they were into clinical study and being able to show effects in human patients. Short-term strategy, one to two years, what needed to be done? 
Well, the technology was being pulled out of a university, so it needed to be industrialized, it needed to be automated, and it needed to be shown in multiple proof of concept uh, validating experiments. And so the short-term strategy was to find preclinical partners and to do internal development to progress the technology forward enough that candidates could be created that would advance into clinical study. So strategy has a circular nature. Strategy is never static. So in large organizations, this is often an annual strategic planning process. <clears throat> a, uh, a focus on strategy in the first quarter of the year leads to forecasting and portfolio planning, leading into budget decisions uh, for the coming year. Usually that's in the, the call it Q3. And then in Q4, a focus on goals and objectives for everyone in the organization. So in the coming year, they know exactly what they have to accomplish to meet the organization's goals. So you see this continue over and over and over again. And annual focus at the beginning of the year on long-term strategy, where does the organization want to get in five to seven years, and how will they get there, leading to that short-term series of goals and objectives. Now, in a large corporation, you may do this every year. In a small organization, like a startup, there tends to be a more static uh, strategy, long-term strategy, that lasts for a couple of years, with the goals and objectives changing on a six-month to, to one-year cycle. So we're going to use Iperion as an example here to talk about a large strategic change that happened and, uh, and when and how that happened. So Iperion was founded in 2007 uh, based as a what company on the uh, technology of induced pluripotent stem cells as a platform with which to develop novel therapeutics. After four years of work, they had patents, they, they had made some progress, but the board of directors came in and made the decision to uh, fire most of the senior leadership of the organization, bringing in a new CEO, Nancy Stogliano, who changed the direction of the organization and the value proposition and strategy of the organization. So she took uh, Iperion and refocused it as a Y company into neurodegenerative disease as a focus area and a technology of monoclonal antibodies as the therapeutic platform that they were going to pursue. So leveraging the expertise in induced pluripotent stem cells as a way to move forward in a specific clinical area. And because of that, we have to imagine that a number of preclinical projects had to be stopped. They didn't fit within the why. Uh, those, in some cases, were spun out into an organization called True North, a focus on orphan drug indications. And Nancy worked as the CEO of both of those corporations for a, a period of a couple of years. Uh, in 2014, Iperion was acquired by Bristol-Myers Squibb for $175 million in initial payment and $550 million in long-term milestone payments. And True North continues as a clinical stage organization uh, with Nancy Stagliano as the CEO. So let's talk about where this leads and where you can uh, look for and, and think about additional information that you might, you might want to pursue. So analysis uh, for developing strategy uses inputs from a couple of different areas. Competitive landscape, market opportunity assessment, market segmentation, uh, metrics. So how is a project progressing or how is a commercial uh, product selling? And portfolio. So analysis of all of these areas will feed into a strategy that uses the following skill sets. So budgeting, forecasting, uh, enterprise growth planning, commercial planning, and program management are all skill sets that are needed in order to develop a robust organizational strategy. So let's talk about a parallel to academia. Here's some questions to consider as you think about strategy in the context of an academic uh, focus area. 
So first, what is the development cycle of projects in your lab? Where are they between basic research and publication? How many projects do you have in each part of the development cycle? What are the organizational capabilities of the lab? How many grad students, postdocs, lab managers are in, are in that lab? What kinds of equipment do you have in order to do the experiments uh, uh, that you're looking to do? And then what are the near and long-term strategies for your lab? So what do you plan to accomplish in the next year versus plan to accomplish in the next five years? And what needs to be done in order to meet those milestones? So wrapping up, here's some, uh, some resources to learn about business strategy. Uh, you can look for university coursework primarily through a business school that may provide information on uh, theoretical information on business strategy. There are courses on iTunes and Coursera that you, can, uh, that you can look into. The Harvard Business Review has excellent case studies that you can use to understand business strategy. And Fierce Biotech, or the fierce uh, umbrella of daily newsletters, can give you focus and an understanding of what is going on on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis with uh, enterprises within a, a specific field. And last, if you have a certain company that you're really interested in, earnings calls and, uh, and, and, and publications from those public companies can give you a huge insight into their business strategy. So we've reached the end of the presentation. Thank you for watching, and I hope this was informational and educational.